<clears throat> back again with the um, the radiant hydronic in-floor heating system in our bus and just a quick little background so my wife and I have decided we're gonna rent our house move into the bus bring our two kids with us and the dog and we've been RVing for years now and we usually try to go for a month at a time We've been in a cab over camper, a converted Sprinter van, a fifth wheel trailer, travel trailer. And I think that's it. And every time we go, I'm always fiddling around with the heat. And I just, I figured I wanted to go with Radiant because I love the way it heats the space, but I love the simplicity of it. And you can, once you get the tubing installed and your plumbing set up, which is really pretty inexpensive, um, you can heat your water by uh, solar water collectors. You can use electric to heat a water heater. You can use propane. You can use wood from a wood stove. You can uh, run a um, heat exchanger coil around it. Um, so you have all kinds of ways to heat the water. That's why we didn't go with electric in-floor heating because I only have one way to do it. And I don't want to be too reliant on that. Plus I like to just, I like to know that when need be, the propane goes into the water heater, the water heater heats the water. So. In this system, you only need about 110 to 100 degree water coming out of the water heater, so you can do it with the solar. Uh, you probably need a water to back it up. And then you don't want the floor temperature uh, to be greater than 86 degrees. I haven't, I just, I read that. So I know that above that, it's supposedly it's uncomfortable. And by coincidence, when you think about it, buses, as they come originally equipped, are heated hydronically because they use the cooling system from the engine or the water or the uh, sorry the the coolant in that system they tube it up to the bus it stops midships goes through a small radiator with some electric fans on it heats the middle of the bus comes up to the front and goes through another radiator and you can use it for defrost heat the driver so really if you wanted to go super super simple you can just get the cheapest water heater you could find it's such a small system doesn't take a lot and you could plumb it into your existing system which would also preheat the engine of the bus by just, you know, coincidence. Um, so that's why we went or decided to go with radiant. Plus I think it's cool. And um, I just really wanted to try because I've never done in-floor radiant heat before. In the background, you can see the finished zones. I'm going to yank the camera off the roof. Another cool thing about the bus is they're all steel. So you can just slap a magnet anywhere. Um, anyway, just give me a second. So here's the finished cutout with the router. This first section is what I'm calling the living area because we're gonna have, uh, you know, couches on either side and then kitchen counters and kitchen counters. So it's so a living area and kitchen area all in the one zone, which is approximately 135 linear feet of, in one loop. And you can see how the zones exit out. And almost by coincidence, it worked out such that that blue tape on the left there is where my wall is and the bathtub's on this side. And this blue tape is where the basement stops. It starts over here, comes down and stops here. So by coincidence, I mean, my layout, by coincidence relative, my layout it ended up nice, but I did plan these four lines. So you can see the, the supply and the return and the supply and the return for each zone are gonna drop over. My cabinet's here. They're gonna go through the floor. The minute they get in the cabinet, they're gonna be insulated and then drop down right along that wall underneath so they can go right to a manifold and then right into the um, heater, heat source. And that way when I put the tubing in before I put the floor down, I can run it down these routed out grooves, run it long up the wall, put the flooring in, then when I'm done, peel the flooring back, dive them through, and there's no connections anywhere inside the bus. It's all external, just for ease of maintenance. So then that's, I just showed you the first living area zone. Then this is the sleeping area and bathroom area. We'll have bathtub, toilet adjacent to the fire exit, composting, and then um, a little, um, like a pantry closet area here, and then bunks. 
then down near the wheel wells we'll have a washer no a dryer and a washer and then a king size bed in the back because we co-sleep we got two kids we need the whole area for sleeping back there um, but this is the finished zones and I'll give you another view here from the back to the front. Um, so that's the sleeping area. And then now at the other end is the uh, living area. 